I'm not sure if this mic is on, but I trust that you all will let me know if you can hear me. Is it on? Yay! Can you hear her back there? No. No. Now the way is turning it up a little loud. Try it again. All right. Maybe I'll come closer. So I know that Father Jim has introduced me to you all the last two weeks, but I really haven't had a chance to say anything to you. So since I have the mic, so to speak, or literally, I'd just like to tell you all how truly grateful I am that I said yes to come here to Christ Church in Warwick. <laughs> Thank you. And more importantly, how thankful I am that you all said yes to me and that you guys have welcomed me and embraced me. Thank you so much. So let's pray. Come, O oh God, and fill us with your love. Come, O oh Christ, and renew your mission among us. Come, Holy Spirit, and set our hearts on fire. Amen. Heartbeat, heartbeat, heartbeat. Since I'm new, I'm going to ask you all to humor me for a moment and do this with me. Heartbeat, heartbeat, heartbeat. Thank you. Our presiding bishop once preached that the heartbeat of the church is mission. And that's a really profound statement if you know what mission is, and if you know what the mission of the church is. I had no idea until I was bored one day, probably in church during a sermon, not Father Jim's sermon, I'm sure, <laughs> but during a sermon, I was flipping through the Book of Common Prayer, and on page 855, it said that the mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other. I'll say that again. You can open your book and look. <laughs> Make sure I'm right. But it's on 855 on the top on the right. And it says that the mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. So what this means, it means that at our very root, at the essence, at the core of who we are is relationship. We're about relationship with each other and with God. And when you think about all of the relationships out there in the world, there are so many that are broken. Relationships among nations and between people and within families. And think about all the people who are hungry, hungry for a message of hope and healing and relationship, the message that Jesus has to offer and the message that this church has to offer heartbeat. It's the mission, or the mission of the church is heartbeat. And I know that that is the collective heartbeat of this church. Many of you don't know this, but I did two secret or cognizant mission trips out here before I came. And I was able to witness you all in action in the community breakfast and in the thrift shop. And that let me know that your collective heartbeat was mission, and that you all know and embody mission. And through that, I knew that the kingdom of heaven was near. It was right here at Christ Church, and it was amazing. So for those of you who volunteer in Altar Guild, or on the vestry, or do the gardening, or the buildings and maintenance, or the community breakfast, or the thrift shop, or the who knows how many other ministries you have going that I've yet to learn about. You all know that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You all know that probably more than most people in this town. And it's amazing, and it's remarkable. And I think there's something deeply profound about clothing people and feeding people like you do here. And when you think about it, that's usually what Jesus did first. He usually met their most basic, fundamental needs, 
by feeding them first. When you think about the feeding of 5,000, you know, he did that first, and then he went on to teach and preach. There probably weren't still 5,000 that stuck around, but you'd like to think that some stuck around and heard him teach and preach. But he knew that it would be physically impossible for him to reach all of the people who are hungry in this world for his message. And so in the last chapter, the chapter right before this one in Luke, it's basically his first mission trip where he commissions 12 people to go out on his behalf and to teach and to preach and to heal and spread his word. But he knew that wasn't sufficient and that would not be enough. So today, in today's gospel, he commissions 70 more. And when you think about it, look around the pews today. Here we sit, 2,000 years later, having heard that message. And now we are commissioned to walk in those footsteps of those first 12, and then the 70, and now us. And I'm going to fumble for some notes here and read to you from this amazing woman, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote in the 1600s. And she reminds us that Christ has no body on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ looks out to the world. Yours are the feet of which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless others now. That is our mission, and that is what I see you all do every day. Because the heartbeat of the church is mission, and this is your collective heartbeat. So today's gospel really is about Jesus' second mission trip, and his packing list was very short. I'm sure it will be much shorter than Father Jim's. And he told them to carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. And his instructions were short, too. He said, go in peace and preach and teach and tell them that the kingdom of God is here. Easy, right? Just preach and teach and heal people. Big deal. Well, my heart pounds when I think about the first mission trip I went on to Guatemala. It was back in the 1980s, and I can't even remember what year it was, but I barely knew the people I went with. I knew one person. It was like a friend of a friend of a friend with a church I'd never heard of, affiliated with I don't know what. But I thought it was a cheap way of group travel, and I'd go someplace I'd never been and do a little bit of good and build homes for orphans and widows and, you know, help these wonderful people. Well, we went for the summer with backpacks and really little more than the shirts on our back like the 70 here and a little more than the commission in our hearts. But we were dependent upon those who would welcome us into their homes and shelter us and feed us for the summer as we built a school and shelters for orphans and widows there. And it was there that I learned that it wasn't about group travel. Mission trips are about transformational travel. And it was there that I was forever changed and the course of my life was altered. It was there that I witnessed my first miracle and I witnessed a boy healed, a boy not much much older than Alex or Corbett. And he was this gorgeous, beautiful boy with dark hair and this t-shirt with green shorts and the dirtiest feet you've ever seen because he was out playing soccer with us in the field. But he was covered with boils, open boils all over his arm. And I don't know if you've ever seen open boils. We don't see that very much in the United States, but they're painful and they're, they're difficult to look at. And I was told that he had these boils from drinking water with raw sewage in it there. And my friend, Brian, just grabbed his hands. He just grabbed his hands and held him and smiled and prayed to him. And he said, beloved child of God, I pray that all of your wounds are healed inside and out and that you will flourish. And this little boy giggled and wiggled and he had no idea what Brian was saying. 
because they spoke this ancient tribal language called Ishil, and we had no translator with us. But he was delighted that we were paying attention to him. And I thought, that was nice. That was nice that Brian did that. And then the next morning when we showed up, it had rained, and it was really cold, so there was steam rising up off the mountains. And this woman, this boy's mother, brought us hot, steaming coffee. And it was so good because it was so cold. But this was so special because coffee in Guatemala is like gold. She brought us Guatemalan gold, and that is her very existence, were the few beans that they could eke out on this mountainside. That is how they survived, and to share that with us was very, very special. And the boy shows up, and the boils are completely gone. And I think had I been in the United States, I would not have recognized this for the miracle that it was. I think that I, had I been here in the United States, I would have thought to myself, the boy knew that Brian was praying for him, and so that just shows the power of the mind over the body. Or I probably would have thought, you know, he was on antibiotics and they finally kicked in. But when you're in less developed countries, things become less gray, and there are less ways to fight that power of God that you witness. There are less explanations, and you simply have to come to accept it. And it's a little scary, and it's, it's powerful. And I was a little frightened. I wanted to go home and hang out with my Episcopalian friends. I wasn't used to laying hands on people and seeing healings. And I know that we pray for people every Sunday to be healed, but I had not witnessed it firsthand right there so immediately. And often when we pray for people who are sick, they're not healed and cured in the ways that we want or expect. So that was something new to me, despite the fact that this gospel today tells us that we have the power, the power to do these extraordinary things on behalf of Jesus. And we shouldn't be afraid to try and to do it and to expect it. We may not always get the results that we want or hope, but the gospel doesn't focus on results or the numbers. Jesus doesn't tell these people, run out and heal as many people as quickly as you can and as many as you can. Instead, he just says, go and find people who will welcome you into their home and dwell among them and let them know that the kingdom is near. He's not looking for results. He's looking for us to reach out to people out of our own vulnerability and to share and dwell among them because we're about relationships. So I think that's something very profound and something that this church does amazingly, amazingly well. And I think that we're at our best when we do, when we reach out in relationship and share our own vulnerabilities, when we go with barely anything on our back and just be who we are and share and build each other up in Christ so that we can share the love of God wherever we go with whomever we are with, and that we come together every week and break bread together and know again and again and again that the kingdom of heaven is near. It is right here. It is in our collective heartbeats. Amen.